Welcome back. Let's get chatting with the management of DCB Bank. They report their numbers. Well, the CASA ratio or the low cost deposit ratios and the net interest margins have been doing well for the company. The slippages were rather elevated in the quarter gone by. So, what's the outlook from here? We have the MD and CEO Murli Natarajan joining in. Thanks a lot, Mr. Murli, for joining in. Uh, you know, let's start with the slippages itself. They've been elevated for the last. Uh, six to seven odd quarters. In fact, I mean, you know, if I look into the details out there, it's three to four corporate accounts uh, which slipped during the quarter. And the ex-gold slippage ratio was just about 4.2%. So it was the gold portfolio that hurt your slippages as well. What can you give us in terms of an outlook for improvement on this going forward? So if you look at our gross NPA and net NPA, both have improved year on year and quarter on quarter. That is point number one. If you look at our provision coverage ratio, it has gone above 70%. Okay. So those points you should consider. Secondly, we are targeting self-employed MSME, SME customers. They have gone through some really difficult period during COVID wave 1 and wave 2. Things are stabilizing, improving much faster than we expect. We expect the slippage ratio to continue to be slightly higher for at least two more quarters before it settles down to pre-COVID uh, levels. Our restructured book is performing very well. We never restructured, uh, uh, you know, unsecured portfolio. Our restructured portfolio is, majority of it is, uh, you know, secured portfolio. So the performance of restructured portfolio is also in line with our expectations. So I expect the similar kind of situation for at least two quarters. But look at the recoveries and upgrades. In fact, our upgrades are slightly higher than recoveries, which shows that we have a very resilient portfolio. Even if the customer do slip into NPA, we are able to kind of recover our overdues and upgrade stroke recover. And that is the reason why the portfolio quality has been holding up throughout last two years, despite many uh, challenges. Regarding your corporate accounts, once in a while, you do have challenges on corporate accounts because these are multi-banking or consortium accounts where if the payment uh, is not coming forth properly, obviously one or two banks uh, resort to NCLT, in which case still the resolution is sorted out, you can't get your uh, payments. So we do expect some improvement in that as well in the coming quarters. Okay. Hi, Ms. Natarajan. We have taken all what you had to say on board. Now, give us a couple of numbers. The slippage ratio is expected to remain high for the next couple of quarters. I think uh, on a quarterly run rate, uh, slippages are around 450 crores. You could correct me on that one. So, do you expect it to stay at current levels, point number one? And on the restructured book, you're saying, you know, it's secured. So, you don't see any worry with it at around 7% of your loans. You see an unlikelihood of these turning bad, right? N not at all. See, there is a percentage of good book and the restructure that would turn bad. That is what should be expected because we are running a business of risk. So that is what is expected. As long as it is within the expected range, you are fine. We did not restructure uh, unsecured loans. If I look at the unsecured loans that would have restructured, it will be a minuscule of the total portfolio. Most of our restructure is in uh, either home loan or lap or to some extent in commercial vehicle and SME, MSME working capital. They are performing as per expectations. And whatever slippages are coming through the restructured book, also we are able to upgrade, recover, because we are dealing with a secured uh, business. I expect uh, our portfolio to be growing steadily. Our uh, approach is to double our balance sheet between three to four years. Systematically, we will also be reducing the uh, impact of the restructured portfolio. But as far as the uh, credit cost is concerned, whether restructured or good book, everything is reflected in our credit cost. Take that point. Uh, uh, so if you could give us a bunch of numbers, you know, you said you're looking at doubling your uh, uh, book or balance sheet by in the next three to four years. That would imply what, a 20, 22 percent uh, sort of loan growth uh, going forward. Uh, would you, uh, you know, concur with that? And you said everything will be taken care of in the credit cost. What kind of credit cost guidance can you give going forward? I have given a credit cost guidance of about 50-55 basis point, which is our pre-COVID credit cost. If you look at our uh, performance on loan book from 2010 to 2020, approximately we have grown at a CAGR of 22%. Uh, we grew about 7 odd percent in the two difficult uh, COVID years. We are trying to put the 
uh, you know, trajectory back to pre-COVID levels. That is why I'm guiding that we expect our loan book to double uh, between three to four years' time, hopefully in about three and a half uh, years' time, and with a credit cost of approximately 50 basis points. Okay, all right. Mr. Natarajan, give us two more factors, then, if you're going to go, be growing at this sort of a rate. Do you have any fundraising plans? Point number one. The second factor is on your NIMS. Oh, they are looking splendid. 17 quarter highs out there at around 3.8, 3.9%. What is the sustainable number we're looking at on the NIMS? Uh, at some point, we even had a NIM of uh, 4 or above uh, 4%. So I would say that the business model that we have constructed since 2017 is that our NIM should be in the range of somewhere between 365 to 375 basis point with a corresponding credit cost of approximately 50 basis point. That's a business model that we are constructing and that is what we are pursuing. Regarding capital raising, if you look at our risk-weighted assets, if we originate loan of 100 rupees, the risk-weighted consumption is not more than 60 rupees. It's a very capital efficient uh, model. Looking at our current uh, tier one, and we have not added the half-year profit to the tier one. It will be done once the audited financials are completed at the end of the year. We do not expect ca you know, capital raising for at least one year. When we see growth that we are expecting, we will consider capital raising after one year. Right, so no capital raising in the next 12 months at least. But with 20-22% uh, growth ambition, I mean, I'm sure at some point you will have to consider. But that's not happening in the next one year. Uh, that's correct, right? That is because the capital efficient model, if I grow at 15-16%, we will be self-funded on capital. Obviously, we are not expecting our growth to be much higher than 15-16%. So, looking at the current capital consumption and also our capital efficiency, I expect no capital raising requirement for at least one year. Point on board in this, 20-22% sort of growth that you are guiding for, can you break up, uh, you know, what segments will grow faster than average and which of them will lag? Because I am looking at your CV portfolio. That's growing much slower than uh, all other sectors of your business and much slower than peers as well. So, can you give us a break up into, you know, what will lead growth and what is something that you're not looking at in terms of growing? So, our approach is mortgage would be our lead product. Already, mortgage is about close to 50% of our portfolio. Within mortgage, home loan and business loan will be leading the growth. We'll be focusing on KCC, Tractor, SME, MSME, Working Capital. We also have taken two very good initiatives in the last uh, about 12-15 months, which is on threads and co-lending. Both are doing well for us. We are uh, looking to add more partners in uh, uh, co-lending. And our agribusiness also is doing uh, quite well. Uh, as far as commercial vehicle is concerned, we are currently uh, targeting only our existing customers. We'll wait for another year, year and a half before we step up growth in commercial vehicles. Okay, all right, Mr. Natarajan. It's been good speaking to you. You're pretty clear and concise with what you're saying. You've laid out the roadmap as well. We appreciate you joining here on CNBC TV 18. Look forward to chatting up with you at the end of the next quarter. Well, for the time being, though, we'll slip into a short break. You come back. We'll continue our focus on markets and on stock-specific action.